G'day, I'm Wayne from Land and Bay Fishing. Today we're going to have a look at how you shave the weight off a squid jig. So I've talked a bit about it. Um, this is something that I learned from Paul McGowan, uh, the squid guide on the south side. Paul's channel, you'll find him uh, Morton Bay Squid Guide. Very, very good guide, very knowledgeable person when it comes to squidding and you can't go past learning from him if you want to learn how to do this. One thing I will say is the, 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 probably the main thing he taught me was to shave the weight. To reduce the weight on the squid jig, what that does, instead of a standard squid jig sinking at about three seconds a meter or even less, your squid jig will sink between six and nine seconds a, a meter. I found once you go past that six to nine seconds a meter, so you still need a steady sink rate, it almost gets to the point where you go from this to floating. So around that six to nine seconds, and you'll be spot on the money if you want to fish shallow water for squid. Okay, the things you'll need are right here. You'll need, if you've got them, not essential, but if you've got them, uh, long nose vice grips, a squid jig, a couple of files. Now a rasp, just to get the, the main stuff off when you need to, and then a nice smooth file, so that um, when you've got the, the rough, and ready and when it's down to, to you can smooth it over basically so you need a, a file to be able to smooth it over to get you started some side cutters now one other thing that we'll talk about today is once it's all done and especially if you're using the cheaper squid jigs like this is a dollar from china um, if you're using squ cheaper squid jigs it's always good to put a bit of two pack or a bit of glue around the weight at least you can cover the whole body if you want to if you want to protect your jig for a bit longer but you can certainly just put it around your, your uh, weight there and it'll hold your weight in. So this is a standard squid jig, the way it comes out of the box. We're going to put this in the water, show you how quickly this sinks before we shave it. So we'll do that. So we've got a bucket of water of about 30 centimetres. And we put that in and you can see it gets to the bottom in probably about one and a half seconds at the absolute most. Um, maybe even less than that. We'll do it again. So I'd say probably a second to get through 30 centimetres of water. Now that's just leaving it on the top and letting it go. If you're casting, you're letting it go from a distance and it gets to the bottom very quickly. So fresh water and salt water are completely different when it comes to things floating. Make sure when you do your testing, you test it in salt water. So there you go. That was it in the salt water prior to, uh, to modifying the the weight on the front here, let's modify the weight. Firstly, start off with your side cutters. I like to crimp the actual weight if you can, so that the pressure isn't so much on the glue that holds the weight into the jig. So if you're holding the jig and you're doing things to the, uh, to the weight, the glue's under stress. If you hold it here and not holding, holding on the jig, well then you don't have that stress on the glue. So if you can, pair of ice grips and hold the weight like that. So let's shave, shave the back off first. Shave the top off. I've done a few of these so I know I can take at least this much off. So that's how much we've lost so far. That's what it looks like. So what we'll do now, I'll put this in the water and test to see how quickly it sinks. Okay, you can see that's a lot slower. That probably took a second and a half. The first, with all the weight, took approximately a second, but you can definitely see a difference between what it was and what it is currently. We'll drop it and have a look. About 12 centimeters. Still gets to the bottom fairly quickly with that amount of weight. So this is from a floating on the bottom. Okay. That's with that little amount cut off there. Let's cut off a bit more. So that's how much we've lost so far. You can see it there, sitting there. Let's cut off a little bit more. So cut off a bit from the front. And a bit more from the back. Yeah, you can see there's our four cut so far. So it's quite a bit of weight we've lost. So we'll test this one again and see how we go. I'll just cut that sharp corner off. 
we'll test this and see how quickly this one sinks now just remember you don't do this on all your jigs you do want jigs that sink at three seconds a meter the moment you go over about two meters of water you want that jig to get down close to the bottom and you want it to cover that whole column and if you're doing this it's taken way too long so uh, you you will need some jigs that aren't modified like this this is just for shallow water and there you go nice and slow still got all the way to the bottom took probably a good two to three seconds to get there really gentle through the column that's exactly what we're looking for. So now it's time to file it, make it nice and smooth, and then secure the weight. Just do it again for good measure. And that's perfect. One more time, we'll drop it this time. All right, let's clean it up, and we'll have a look at the end product. So that's where we're at at the moment. You can see it is a little bit rough. We need to put the vice grips on there and just give that a little touch up with a nice smooth file just to make it nice and smooth and finish it off. And then we do a bit of gluing and that's ready to go fishing. So throw it in your vice grips if you've got it. Throw that in a vice. And then nice, nice and gently just hold the back of it, take the rough edges off it. So, that's pretty much done. That's our finished product. Let's have a look at it, see how it swims. So you can see it just creeps to the bottom. How good's that? That is a perfect lure for shallow water. We'll let it go from a bit of a height. You can see it slow down before it gets to the bottom. Beautiful. All right, this is a wet lure, so I won't put the glue around this. If I was going to, well, I will, if, but I will tomorrow. So what I'll do, I'll get another lure now and just show you how I glue it, what I do with the glue, just to get it around around the weight, just to finish off a lure like this. But this one, because it's wet, I'll do this one tomorrow. Okay, this one's nice and dry. I'll throw a bit of two-pack together and put it around the weight on this one. Now, there are so many different two-packs. I use these. Um, this is rod binding solution, so you, you two-pack for if you're going to uh, you fix rods up. This is the stuff that you join together 50-50, and uh, it goes over the thread and gives you that nice glossy finish. The more expensive ones don't smell. The cheap ones absolutely reek. So spend a little bit extra if you're going to glue it and get the ones that won't smell at all because you put this on a squid jig, I promise you if you put the cheap one on, you may as well throw the jig in the bin because it'll stink. So 50-50, just a little drop, not a little drop. Let's see, highly uh, scientific my measurement there. And we get a little stick, back in a minute, Paddle pop stick, give it a little stir. Now I would have added a little bit of the stirring out there. It just drags on, but make sure it's really well stirred in. Once that's stirred in, throw your stick away. Nice cheap paintbrush from Bunnings. Make sure you hold these feathers out of the way. Get a little bit of your glue on your paintbrush. You just paint around the base of the weight. It's nothing more complicated than that. I like to put a dab on the eyes. It helps keep the eyes in. 
Now you can, if you've got plenty of solution and you've got the time, you can paint the whole jig and it'll protect your jig really, really well. And I quite often do this to all my jigs. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, but uh, you obviously don't have to as long as you paint the weight. And um, once you've painted that weight, you can, you can use it to your heart's content. The main reason I paint the whole jig is the squid have a beak for a mouth. I don't know if you've all seen squid, but when you catch your first squid, <clears throat> have a good look at its beak. Don't put your fingers anywhere near it because if you do, it'll take them off. But uh, what this does, it protects the material on your squid jig and uh, stops that beak from piercing it and wrecking it completely. It still will wreck it, won't save it completely, but it'll make it last a whole lot longer than it would if you didn't put anything on it. So that's it, done, ready to dry. So I'll go and put that into dry and we'll finish the vid up. So that's my jig drying. It's a very simple process, it really is. A little bit time consuming. You really do need to test it in salt water. That's, that's really important, test it in fresh water. Don't think, ah, oh, it'll be right, it won't. If you get it sinking as slow as I just did in the salt water, in fresh water, it'll float in salt water, promise you. That's it from me. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, if you got something out of the video, hit the like button and I'll see you on the next one.